Hello, good morning. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Friday the 13th of May and we're reading morning prayer Easter season from the Church of England's Common Worship. If you're following in the book, you'll find the words towards the beginning after the prayer during the day. Division, there's a morning and evening prayer, ordinary time and the seasons. And uh, we're looking for morning prayer Easter in the seasons section there. I'm just trying to get my dog to sit down again. The words are also available on the Church of England's website, Aremus Daily Prayer, and downloadable from for Apple or Android devices. We're going out on Zoom, Facebook and YouTube. The Zoom codes are on the Blythe Church's Facebook page and website. We're live streaming on Facebook and I'm recording to upload onto my Dominic Dover YouTube channel in a moment. So welcome to those of you who join us on any of those formats. <clears throat> and a reminder that I am in the building. You are very welcome to join me here if you're passing eight and six every day. Uh, for the next couple of weeks, we're not in on Mondays, but then my colleague Ginny will be starting on Mondays. And on Sundays, I do a traditional communion at eight in the morning and said even song with hymns in the evening. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth, mouth shall proclaim your praise. <clears throat> In your resurrection, O Christ, let, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. <coughs> the Easter Anthems. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the, Glory Father, to the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was at the, the beginning, beginning, is, is now, now, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The psalm appointed this morning is number 33, which we'll read antiphonally. If you're following in the book, you'll find it at the back. We open and close with the refrain, and we'll pause that we may read the prayer that follows and use it as we see fit. And we say the glory be after the last verse. Psalm 33. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for it is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with the lyre, on the ten string of the harp, sing his praise. Sing for him a new song. Play skillfully with shouts of praise. 
For the word of the Lord is true, and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all their hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathers up the waters of the sea as in a water skin, and lays up the deep in his treasury. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Stand in awe of him, all who dwell in the world. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He frustrates the designs of the peoples. But the counsel of the Lord shall endure for ever and the designs of his heart from generation to generation. Happy the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people he has chosen for his own. The Lord looks down from heaven, and beholds all the children of earth. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them, and understands all their works. No king is saved by the minds of his host, <clears throat> no warrior delivered by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance, for all its strength it cannot save. Behold the eye of the Lord is upon <clears throat> those who fear him, on those who sit in hope for his steadfast love. To deliver their soul from death, and to feed them in the time of famine. Our soul waits longingly for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him. In his holy name have we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, as we have set our hope on you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy, and Spirit, the Holy Spirit, as it was in the, was beginning, the beginning, is now, now and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. We scroll past our Exodus reading to the Song of Moses and Miriam, turning back in the book to morning prayer during Easter season. For the same which we will read as we read the psalm in your unfailing well, love, love o lord, lord you lead, you lead the, people the people whom you have, have redeemed alleluia. alleluia i will sing to the lord who has triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea the lord is my strength and my song he has become my salvation this is my god whom i will praise the God of my forebears, whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered. <clears throat> they sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. By your invincible strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory, Glory to the Father, to the Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and shall be forever. Amen. In your unfailing in your love, love, O Lord, Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our first Bible reading comes from Exodus, Exodus chapter 35, starting at verse 20 through to the seventh verse of the following chapter. So Exodus is the second book of the Hebrew Scriptures, so if you open at the beginning, past the title page, you'll find Genesis, flick on through to Exodus. Once you're in Exodus, looking for the large number, 35, that's the chapter number and the small numbers in the text are the verse numbers. We're starting at Exodus 35, 20 going on to 36, 7. If you're following online, it's just before the canticle you read a moment ago. Don't forget. Thank you, David. Then all 
the congregation of the Israelites withdrew from the presence of Moses. And they came, everyone whose heart was stirred, and everyone whose spirit was willing, and brought the Lord's offering to be used for the tent of meeting, and for all its service, and for the sacred festivals. <coughs> so they came, both men and women, all who were of willing heart, brought brooches and earrings and signet rings and pendants, all sorts of gold objects, everyone bringing an offering of gold to the Lord. And everyone who possessed blue or purple or crimson yarn or fine linen or goat's hair or tan ram skins of, or fine leather brought them. Everyone who could make an offering of silver or bronze brought it as the Lord's offering. And everyone who possessed acacia wood of any use in the work brought it. All the skillful women spun with their hands and brought what they had spun in blue and purple and crimson yarns and fine linen. All the women whose hearts moved them to use their skills to spin the goat's hair. And the leaders brought on onyx stones and gems to be set in the ephod and the breastplate and the breastpiece and spices and oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women whose hearts made them willing to bring anything to the work of the Lord and commanded by Moses to be done brought it as a free will offering to the Lord. Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has called by name Azael, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and has filled him with divine spirit, with skill, intelligence, and knowledge in every kind of craft, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, and cutting stones for setting and in carving wood in every kind of craft. And he has inspired him to teach both with him and Ahilab, son of Ahimai, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skills to do every kind of work done by an artisan, or by a designer, or by an embroiderer in blue, purple, and crimson yarns, and in fine linen, or by a weaver, any sort of artisan or skilled designer. Baziel and Ahalab and everyone skillful to whom the Lord had given skill and understanding to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary shall work <coughs> in accordance with all that the Lord has commanded. Moses then called Bezel and Ahalib and everyone skillful to whom the Lord had given skill. Everyone whose heart was stirred to, be, to come to the work and they received from Moses all the free will offerings that the Israelites had brought for doing the work on the sanctuary. They still kept bringing him free will offerings every morning, so that all the artisans who were doing every sort of skill on the sanctuary came, each from the task being performed, and said to Moses, People are bringing so much more than enough for doing the work that the Lord has commanded us to do. So Moses gave command, and the work was proclaimed throughout the camp. And the word was proclaimed throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing, for what they had already brought was more than enough to do all the work. Thank you. I was reminded of uh, your Helen and her. Um, quilting and uh, it's one of those passages that from time to time one thinks now I wonder where that was I need to go and look for it because it's one of the few places in scripture where 
designing creativity, needlework, stitch work is clearly part of God's plan for worship and uh, for human life. And it's a skill given, and yet it's still directed by God. <clears throat> and all these free will offerings that people have brought, things of value, things of less value for these workers to turn into something that is of awe and wonder in which God may be worshipped. Indeed. So it's uh, an encouragement also to any of us who are <clears throat> thinking of reasonably significant um, church refurbishing um, plans as we are here. That's good. Luke 4 then, our next reading, 14 to 30. And uh, Luke is the third, I think, of the Gospels. So if you're following the Bible, two-thirds of the way through, the Second Covenant New Testament should begin, beginning with the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. And we're looking for the large number four, small number 14. We're going on to verse 30. Luke 4, 14 to 30 is just after the canticle we read earlier, if you're following online. Thank you, David. And Jesus filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and the report about him spread through the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll, and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. All eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him, and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote me this proverb, not to cure yourself. And you will say, do here also in your hometown things that you we have heard that you did in Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's own town. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah. And the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. This Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Assyrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. Thank you. Reminiscent of uh, <clears throat> the Palm Sunday story where we hear him doing a reading, sitting down, talking to them, and they love what they hear. Um, I suspect he's saying things like, God loves you, that you are God's people, and uh, the like. But as soon as he starts to suggest that uh, God is also interested in the other lepers and foreign lepers at that, widows and foreign widows at that, they become cross. And I guess it's a alarm call and a warning to us that sometimes we like to hear what God says to us and sometimes we don't, especially if it's people that we know telling us these unfavourable things. And um, depending on how you understand it, I would imagine if there was a great rabble, it wouldn't be too difficult for somebody to just to disappear amongst them as they're all fighting with each other to try and throw them over the edge of the cliff. Or you might think of some sort of 
chariot of fire might have come down from heaven and cleared the way that he might pass through the midst of them, going on his way in a sort of a Victorian Sunday school picture. But one way or the other, his end has not yet come. He lives to fight another day. And so God may well rescue us uh, from our encounters that we might continue to serve, even that struggle of saying the good things, saying things that people like to hear, things that people don't like to hear, even in our own family and community. So to the responsory then, back in morning prayer during Easter season. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death, death is swallowed up in victory. victory. Where, where, O oh death, death, is your sting? The Song of Zechariah. The Lord who is, is risen, risen from, from the tomb, tomb who for our sakes, sakes hung upon the tree. tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, be the, Lord the God, God of Israel, Israel who has, has come to his people and set them free. free. He, has he has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Saviour, sacrifice, seal one in three three in one as we come to you on this friday even in the season of easter we recognize that death on our behalf that we who were sick may be healed we who are poor may be rich we who are isolated may belong and we thank you for that great exchange which you made out of your love your compassion your empathy with and for us and through no merit or excuse or reason <clears throat> on our side. And we thank you for that. And we ask that you will enable and inspire us to live in that today as we creatively um, adorn our worship space, our worship lives, as we appreciate creativity in others and your part in it, the doers, the um, providers of the raw materials, the designers, we thank you. For all people who make their money and their living, we've got a dressmaker in one of our PCCs, and we pray your blessing on her and all like her with those skills, and we thank you for them. And just uh, going back to our Luke, we pray for those who are called to speak the truth and words of encouragement, even within their own community, where some of what they say is welcome and some not so much. Give us wisdom and grace to be the people you have called us to be. Amen. We are invited by World Prayer News to pray for Myrna Paolo, a church mission <coughs> society partner whose focus is supporting leaders and members of the Diocese of Northern Argentina 
through a process of transition and leadership change over the next few years. And we pray that this individual is able to be a bridge between different generations as well as between Latino and Wichi communities. <clears throat> Amen. Christian Action Research and Education. Prince of Peace, we remember marriages and families that are facing breakdown. We intercede for children who are affected to be resilient and able to get through such situations. <clears throat> we pray too for the adults and we ask that you provide people to help with conciliation. I notice they don't call it reconciliation, but conciliation, support and wisdom through your merciful love. Amen. From Green Christian, legions of voluntary net zero emission pledges are now in place around the world to meet climate change goals, though ensuring companies and governments meet them is proving a harder task, writes David Shafinsky for Reuters. But new automation and web scraping techniques that aim to keep help tracking groups gather the data they need could soon help churn out almost real-time assessments of plans, curbing greenwashing opportunities among laggards. One effort run by the non-profit organisation Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit based in Britain aims to be the mothership where people come when they think about net zero, said John, John Lang, the group's net zero tracker lead. The tracker now being developed aims to use automated systems to extract clean and export data from various publicly available sources at a fraction of the time it would take humans alone to process the information. So we thank God for these developments. <coughs> we pray that they in their turn, however, don't like uh, cyber currencies generate um, heat and carbon from all those uh, computer processes that are being driven by these pieces of kit. I guess that's the irony, but I'm sure they're aware of that. I would hope they are. But uh, thank God for those who would seek to hold people to account for the pledges that they make in relation to the environment. Amen. And in our um, Blythe suggestions for prayer, we pray for volunteer organisation community groups <clears throat> and the contribution they make to our towns and villages. We thank you for them, those involved in the churches, poor charities, those in the larder, the food bank, those involved with the men's shed, the pear tree, um, coffee caravan and the other initiatives that we all benefit from. We thank you for the people who are served by them and those at trustee level and those who are employers and fundraisers and the like. And we pray they'll continue to thrive and prosper and uh, continue to provide that service for us in and around the town. Amen. <clears throat> We thank you today for our church wardens. Today, the group calling itself, or that I've called St. Michael, being St. Michael Cookley, St. Margaret Heveringham, St. Mary Huntingfield, and St. Mary Walpole. <coughs> Jane at Cookley, vacancy at Heveringham, Emma at Huntingfield, Lee and Ken at Walpole. And we pray a blessing on these, the others on their PCCs, the other officers where they are, where they have them <coughs> in those churches, the treasurers and secretaries. Pray for the congregation, the communities. And uh, we ask that they may be inspired by uh, your gracious and inclusive words to them and through them as local people. May they be encouraged to bring of what they have, of, uh, to bring value, creativity, joy and beauty to worship in those places. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Ja, <laughs> Thank <clears throat> you.
the collect for Easter season from the book, God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, your kingdom come, your will, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.